Hola, buenas tardes. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome. Uh, first of all, o primero, uh, a nivel de traducción. We have uh, interpretation services in channel one. We have English and channel two in Spanish. We only have two languages, so please, if you have any questions, please ask them only in English or Spanish. We'll start with a very quick introduction from uh, President Infantino, who will explain to us the result of the council meeting. And then after that, we'll go to your questions. Without further ado, I'll give the floor to the president. Bueno, muy bien. Bienvenidos. Bienvenidos. Welcome. Welcome to all and sundry. It's a real pleasure to be here in Colombia, in Bogota. And before I start on my summary, I really want to thank Colombia. I want to thank uh, the president of the Colombian Football Federation. I want to thank all his team because they really did some outstanding work. And uh, it's uh, not an accident that uh, Colombia qualified for the World Cup because uh, at the Federation they do some excellent work. I really just wanted to kick off with that comment before going into the summary. So today we had the council meeting, a meeting that is always extremely important, in which uh, we discuss many things, uh, and broach many subjects. The most important result of uh, the meeting, uh, bearing in mind obviously all the financial reports presented uh, uh, for FIFA that show the stability and economic strength uh, of our organization, We also spoke a lot about football, and we're going to have uh, our first uh, World Cup in 2018 with video-assisted refereeing, the VAR system. This has been adopted and approved, uh, and uh, obviously we are extremely happy with that decision. Many other issues were addressed uh, on youth football, on women's football, uh, on the Club World Cup. Uh, but these decisions will be delayed. When it comes to youth football, we're going to stick to the competitions that we have now, the under 17 and the under 20. And uh, the other issues will uh, still be up for debate. Uh, we also talked about uh, the, the bidding process for the World Cup in 2026, in which the FIFA Congress in Moscow on the 13th of June will make a decision and uh, today we approved uh, the voting regulations uh, that would lead uh, to that uh, decision. Many other topics were discussed but uh, these are the highlights. So if you have any question I'm at your disposal. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. So now let's move on to the questions. Uh, please only ask one question at a time. And uh, before you ask it, uh, please introduce yourself, give us your name uh, and uh, the name of uh, your uh, news outlet. Uh, let's start maybe with some of the local media. I think we have uh, Caracol Television. Thank you. Mr. President Infantino, Ricardo from uh, Caracol Televisión, we're transmitting live uh, in our afternoon show. I have a specific uh, issue to raise. You included this in your opening remarks. What uh, adjustments are going to be made to the VAR to make it fully operational? And how is this has how has this been goal, 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 caracol, just... approached uh, in this meeting? Well, what's your slogan? Gol 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 caracol, says the president. Okay, well, yes, as I said before, that's an essential decision, a very important and historic decision uh, that's based on the findings and the decisions of IFAB at the meeting two weeks back, more or less. It's a decision that is based on the trials that were carried out and over a thousand matches in the last two years uh, that provide us with uh, guarantees and concrete facts uh, that VAR definitely helps referees and it will help uh, for us to have a uh, 
more transparent and a fairer sport, which is what we want, uh, because uh, the referee uh, has his work cut out for him already, and sometimes he can make mistakes like any human being. And if we can uh, help him uh, to correct some of these mistakes, well, let's do so and we've achieved something good for our sport. That's uh, our position and our conviction. So obviously we'll continue to work and in FIFA we've been working at this for two years with a group of referees, a group of VR experts, With uh, we've looked at the technology to be uh, ready uh, for the World Cup. We have a complete faith uh, in uh, the head of our referee committee, Pierluigi Colina, and his entire team. Uh, he is uh, and his whole team are extraordinary professionals, and they're going to prepare all referees uh, perfectly for the World Cup. Thank you. Mr. President, over here. We're transmitting live for BS Sports, uh, a local uh, broadcaster. I have two questions for you, Mr. President. How uh, will the referees be uh, prepared to use VAR in the World Cup? And the second question is as follows. You've established the headquarter for the under-17 and the under-20 tournaments. What are they? Yes, thank you. Well, the under-17 tournament uh, will be played in Peru. So congratulations to Peru for that. And the under-20 will be played in Poland. And I also want to congratulate Poland, quite obviously. Yeah, with respect to referee preparation, well, this is in the very able hands of the referee committee. They're going to carry out uh, specific workshops and meetings involving referees. Uh, and they will not only be trained, but they will continue to specialize. And let's not forget that VAR was first used in the Club World Cup two years ago. And uh, there was a program of work stemming from the referee committee that was clearly established with many courses for the referees so that they would be ready for the World Cup. Good afternoon. Over here. Uh, from Colprensa, I have a question regarding club competitions. What did FIFA decide? Well, nothing uh, was uh, decided. This uh, Club World Cup competition is an idea. We're going to continue fine-tuning it, working it, working on it, uh, talking with all the stakeholders. Uh, to see if we want to set something up that makes sense for clubs at a worldwide level because our mission as FIFA is obviously to develop uh, our sport everywhere. And, uh, we should lose sight of the fact that we're a world organization not based in any single continent uh, and therefore it's our obligation to uh, look at that. But it's clear that different parties have different perspectives. And what's most important is to carry out wide consultations, including everybody, and that's what we're going to do in the coming weeks. Mr. President, good afternoon. I'm just uh, standing up so that uh, the cameras can uh, catch me. The uh, public opinion is divided with respect to VAR. Not everybody supports it. Uh, so it can be quite controversial. What do you think? Well, uh, when IFAB uh, made a decision, it was unanimous. And when we uh, took our decision, there was nobody that was against VAR. So there you have it. And again, we didn't uh, take this decision lightly. We studied it thoroughly over two years. I myself was quite skeptical at the beginning. But without trying things, you can't know what they're worth. And uh, that's why we carried out trials. And uh, I tell you honestly, in uh, those 11, in those 1,000 matches, there are facts that definitely emerge. Without uh, VAR, a uh, referee can make uh, one important mistake every three matches. That's the average. With VAR, the referee makes an important mistake every 19 matches. These are facts. These are figures. The success rate of referees 
Today, without VAR, is 93%, which is already an excellent uh, score. With VAR, they reach 99% success rate. So we need to leave 1%. That way, you have uh, some margin to uh, speculate in the press and uh, create controversy. We, we do want, we cannot provide 100% guarantee, only 99%. We also talk about the issue of uh, time wastage, and uh, this is uh, discussed uh, passionately in the competitions that have used VAR. They say that time is, is being uh, lost. But a clear analysis yields clear results. In the 1,000 matches, um, VAR involves losing only one minute's time one minute that can correct a decision that's a clear mistake. When we talk about uh, throw-ins uh, nowadays, in each match, uh, seven minutes are waste with, wasted in throw-ins. And these throw-ins actually aren't decisive. However, VAR can be decisive when it comes to the result of the match at the end. So. You can see that there are many uh, positive sides to VAR. Obviously, it's not perfect, and we're not going to reach 100% perfection. Neither do we want it, because uh, human beings are never going to ever be 100% certain on anything. But what we definitely want to do is help. We want to give to the referee the tools so that they can get uh, uh, more information, better information when they need to take the important decisions. And in a World Cup, obviously, uh, some very important decisions are made. And nowadays, uh, we need to live in our times. We need to live with our times. It's not possible that in 2018, everybody in the stadium or in their living rooms knows a few seconds after the play if a referee has made a, a big mistake or not. Everybody's aware of this. The only one who doesn't know is the referee. And not because he doesn't want to be aware. It's because we do not let him become uh, aware and get information. This is quite, uh, this is not normal. And it's a big challenge. I was watching a match uh, these last few days over television here in Colombia. And there was uh, a penalty play. And the referee didn't grant the penalty. And uh, the journalist that was commenting, I'm not going to give any names, he said it was a clear penalty, clear penalty. And then there was a replay and he said clear penalty. But then he saw it a third time and he said, oh, no, the referee was actually right. I, I, I made a mistake. It was not a penalty. So this proves that maybe we need 10 or 20 seconds, but afterwards we can take the right decision. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Sarah Castro. 89 days from the start of the World Cup. Things uh, are looking good. Uh, you have assigned uh, tickets uh, quite well. Do you have any uh, concerns regarding political issues that always uh, hovers around the Russian government? No, no nos preocupa. No, we're not worried at all. We're here to organize a football tournament. We are here to organize the most important event in the world, the most important football event and social event in the world. So we believe that football can bring people together. And I know that the Russian people is really looking forward to welcoming people from all over the world to come and enjoy the World Cup in their country. Political issues, we leave them to the politicians. Good afternoon, Martin Fernandez from Globo Brazil. I would like to know about Marco Polo del Nero. He's been suspended by the Ethics Committee. He's still president of the association. Do you, um, are you worried because he visited the Federation and took a picture with Mr. Del Nero. No, <laughs> because I came back with a T-shirt, and it's great for my personal museum. So no, I have no opinion on this matter. The Ethics Committee is working, and we need to let them work. We need to let them do what they have to do. 
So I have nothing to say about it. Do you mind uh, if, we, if you speak in English for me, if that's all right? Sure. Um, quite a tense couple of days around, I don't know, maybe you didn't find it, but around some of the um, issues and the council members. Um, one of them may suggested, or a couple of them suggested, you're trying to do too much too quickly. You kind of still learning that maybe, uh, first part. Second part, the Europeans seem to be particularly exercised about this Women's League and um, uh, Club World Cup, etc. There were some letters distributed, I understand, today. You know, how serious is that, that issue? And do you think maybe you are trying to do too much? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm very happy if now I'm criticized uh, or FIFA's criticized for doing too much too quick. I think uh, for many years we have all been criticizing FIFA for not doing anything or doing the wrong things. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy to try to do things. I was elected with a clear mandate. I was elected to do things. I, don't was I was not elected just to uh, sit on my chair and uh, inaugurate football pitches and uh, just seek friendships to be re-elected after. I, I want to do things. Obviously, FIFA wants to do things. And the results of what we did uh, are already, until now, are very conclusive um, in the sense that when it comes to our financial situation, it is extremely strong, whereas two years ago, nobody would even dare to sit next to anyone who has a FIFA blazer. Today, we have partners. Uh, we increase our revenues. Uh, we have healthy competitions. Our finances are extremely sound. We multiplied by four the development programs and so on and so forth. Now, part of this and part of what we wanted to introduce in the new FIFA is indeed the culture of dialogue and debate. It's normal that people have different views and different opinions. It's normal that everyone tries to defend its own uh, territory and its own uh, positions. But as FIFA president and as FIFA, we have to take care about the entire world. And we have to take on board all different comments that, uh, that are made. And obviously, sometimes it can get tense. Other times, it can get uh, uh, loud. Uh, other times, uh, it's friendly and, uh, and we agree. What I can say is that whenever we took big decisions in the past, and this will be the same for the future, and it was the same today for the VAR, the important decisions are always taken um, after having consulted everyone in a positive atmosphere. And this is what counts at the end. That to reach that point, there are debates and discussions. I, I for me, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, perfectly normal and it would be wrong if it wasn't the case. Um, Mark Tom, German television. I guess I'm not allowed to speak German, so uh, English or what, sorry. what do you prefer? English or Spanish, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, so we do it in I will English? Come, I will come to Germany, as I told you. We can Promised. speak in German. Promised. Promised. <laughs> um, international experts um, like VADA and international NADAs say that the doping system in Russia hasn't changed, um, and they say FIFA is not doing enough uh, and is not transparent enough uh, with the doping issue and the McLaren report. Um, is doping still an issue? First question. And second issue, what do you do about the McLaren report and the uh, footballers involved? Uh, well, I didn't uh, read or see uh, WADA saying this about, uh, about FIFA, but it could be, could be, I don't know. What I can say is that uh, uh, if you go on our website, we have like a 10-page document with all the different steps that we are taking and we have taken with regard to, in particular, the, the McLaren report and how it's analyzed and how, are we, uh, re, uh, how we are retesting the samples and how we are checking the results and, and so on and so forth. It took the IOC five years to get to some conclusion. I hope we will be faster. Um, but besides of that, what I can say very clearly as well is that uh, when it comes to doping matters in international football and doping matters in matches which are under the responsibility of FIFA, even in the World Cup in Russia, there is no Russia involvement in our anti-doping procedures. There is no Russia involvement. Everything is clear, everything is transparent. There are 
international appointed doping control officers who take the samples, blood and urine, and also the biological passport will, will be checked. They take the samples, they take them out of the country, and they bring them to a laboratory, uh, I think Lausanne, right, uh, for the tests being made. There is no Russian involved, and, uh, um, and it's done at international level. In addition to this, what I would like to say is that when it comes to doping or potential doping of Russian teams, um, FIFA has been testing all the players of Russia, of the squad of Russia, at the Confederations Cup. All results were negative. Not in Russia, outside of Russia. UEFA has tested all the players of the Russian national team at the Euro, 2016. All results were negative. FIFA has tested all the Russian players at the World Cup 2014. All results were negative. No tests have been made in Russia, neither by FIFA nor by UEFA. UEFA is testing every match of Champions League or Europa League, two players at least from each team, outside of Russia, by non-Russians. All results are negative. Does this mean that there is no doping? I don't know. But if there is, we might have a problem with our anti-doping tests for all football players, because we do the same tests for Russia as we do for Germany or England or Sweden or Italy. Yes, that's true. Sorry? No, no, also outside competition. In competition and out of competition tests. UEFA, I've been in UEFA 16 years. I know what tests are made to the players. FIFA, for FIFA, it's the same. We do in competition and we'll do outside of competition. Some doping control officers will appear on all the teams before the competition, outside in their training camps, in their hotels. I don't know where they will go, at what time of the day or the night they will appear. But all the players will be tested in and out of competition. Yeah, that's, and this, is, this has happened as well in the past. Really, really. I'm not just saying this like this. And can I make a joke, but you don't take it bad? Can I make a joke? That if they would take doping, they should maybe change the substance because it didn't work so well until now. It's a joke. It's a joke. It is a joke. I don't know. I don't know if I don't know what was done in the past. I can I can speak about the present and the future and, and presently and in future all players will be tested out of competition. That's what I can say. Buenas tardes, Presidente. Por acá, Pablo Romero del Afternoon, Pablo Romero from El Tiempo, Colombia. I have the following question. What type of World Cup are you expecting in terms of uh, safety, what guarantees uh, can be provided? What are you doing with respect to the violent extremists in uh, Europe as well as in South America? How can you provide guarantees of that will protect the fans? Well, thank you. The issue of uh, safety and security is always important when we are talking about uh, international competitions uh, of this level of importance, such as a FIFA World Cup. It's uh, uh, clear that uh, we take this very seriously, but it's also, first and foremost, uh, the responsibility of uh, the government uh, and the uh, local authorities, especially the Russian police. Uh, and they are definitely taking this very seriously, and they have uh, promised us that it will be uh, a very safe World Cup. I don't think that one can compare what's been done for a World Cup in terms of security with a normal uh, national or even international club match. What the Russian government will set into play to guarantee safety is excellent. We've seen it at work in the Confeds Cup last year, and we have complete faith 
in uh, their work and that it will run smoothly. We always understand, obviously, nevertheless, that before World Cup there are always uh, certain controversies. Uh, however, I feel that I can guarantee that all the fans that will go to Russia will they will discover a country that quite simply wants to celebrate football in the summer of 2018 with the rest of the world. Next. Uh, over here, to your left, sir. Oh, you meant uh, to my right. Uh, yes, uh, I'm from RSCN, uh, Colombia. I'd like to ask you the following question. What was discussed uh, uh, today regarding the World Cup uh, bidding uh, candidates for 2026? Uh, the decision was going to be taken in June of this year, correct? Aside from uh, Morocco and uh, the joint uh, Canada-US uh, and Mexico were bidding. Uh, uh, what other candidates are there? Well, there are no other bids, only those two bids. Uh, and today, uh, the council uh, looked at uh, the different uh, timelines and stages, what's been done and what's going to be done in the coming months and uh, weeks. Uh, and uh, in the end, uh, we uh, adopted and approved the regulations governing the voting for the World Cup at Congress. So uh, that is what happened. We had an update, and that was it. <coughs> yeah, it will be it will be an open vote at the Congress, um, an open vote with publication of uh, the votes uh, immediately after the end of the Congress on www.fifa.com. Yeah, and with majorities and stuff, but this will be published as well. The whole all the details, yeah. President, good afternoon. Juliana Salazar from Caracol Radio. I have a question regarding the 48 teams issue that was your initiative for future World Cups. Has any headway been made on that topic? And regarding the Youth World Cups, have you thought of unifying the under 17, under 20, or keeping them as separate World Cups? Well, the 48 uh, team World Cup is already uh, set up. We've decided that already. It was uh, uh, proposed in Colombia about a year and a half ago, I think, or two years, was it? And uh, in the end, it was accepted at the council level last year. So that's already adopted, approved, and uh, enshrined. Now, regarding the Youth uh, World Cups, uh, Today, we decided to stick to the current format, under 17, under 20, for women and men. We've spoken about this topic for over a year, for a year talking to associations that had different uh, suggestions, but it's the council that decides, and the council decided in that way. Mr. Infantino, good afternoon. Jaime Costa from the international agency Reuters. Uh, uh, forgive me for insisting on this, but uh, do you believe that the diplomatic crisis that uh, England and Russia are ensconced in uh, can uh, lead to any problems related to the FIFA World Cup in Russia? No. Well, another question. Yes, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Pablo Rio. We're uh, live for uh, our broadcast. I wanted to talk to you about the 2026 World Cup and uh, the candidacies, the bids. Uh, a lot of people have talked about it being a, a joint bid. Could you give us some more information regarding that World Cup? Well, we have uh, two bids in play. One is a joint bid involving uh, Canada, United States of America, and Mexico. And the second bid uh, is uh, Morocco. Today, uh, these two bids uh, presented uh, their uh, bid book with all the specifics uh, of their candidacy. This is going to be uh, studied uh, thoroughly by a technical task force, and they will evaluate uh, these two bids. 
They're also going to go to the different countries and visit the venues and so forth. And then they're going to decide, as had been already decided, if these two bids live up to the minimum requirements. If they live up to these requirements, they are eligible. And if they are eligible, the decision will be they will be taken to a Congress where the final decision will be taken. That is the process. But all these details can be found in www.fifa.com. One last question. Salam alaikum. Good point. To play on their home turf. The second one is about the Kuwaiti uh, National uh, Association of Football, about the lifting of the suspension, about the normalization committee. What did you decide on? And thirdly, specifically about Morocco, are you concerned about the differences in infrastructure between what Morocco has to offer and what the United States, Mexico, and Canada has got to offer for the World Cup? Uh, Iraq, we decided today, it's actually a good point, we decided today, sorry for having forgotten it, uh, that uh, in the three cities uh, in which we tested for one year almost uh, uh, friendly matches, Ebril, uh, Basra, and uh, somebody should help me. Nobody, uh, they are all sleeping when I speak. That's Ekerbala, exactly. Uh, in these three cities, uh, international matches would be allowed to play as far as FIFA is concerned. Obviously, the competition organizer, in this case AFC, would obviously have to take their own decision in this respect as well, but for FIFA it would be fine. We received also a request to play friendly matches in Baghdad. Uh, this request was not accepted by the Council, yet the, the situation will still need to be monitored uh, a little bit. The request, to be fair, came in very, very late as well. When it comes to Kuwait, uh, there is nothing new to report. The Council ratified the decision of the Bureau, so there is normalization committee which is continuing its, uh, its work. And uh, as, as far as the bidding uh, is concerned, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just concerned that the whole bidding process goes well. That this is my concern. Uh, then whoever is the best will win, but uh, what we have to guarantee is that we have rules, we have clear rules, we have rules which have to be complied with and respected, and the process can run uh, smoothly, or as smoothly as it can run when there is such an important decision to be taken. And then it's not, uh, it will be uh, to the Congress to decide. In the past, the FIFA president, at least he had one vote in the executive committee. Now it, he has zero votes so because it's the Congress or so the member associations who vote. So. I care about the process and I care about the interests of, uh, of FIFA, of course. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Gracias. Buenas tardes a todos. Gracias a todos. Thank you very much and uh, good afternoon to all.